Hello and welcome to The Print. This is Akanksha Mishra and today I have with me Mr. Sanjay Kumar, co-founder of Eon Space Labs and Mr. Ashwin Prasad, research analyst at Takshila Institution. Today was the first launch of 2026 by the Indian Space Research Organization. It was the PSLV C62 launch with the Earth Observation Satellite EOS-N1 and 15 other co-passenger satellites. The mission was sadly unsuccessful because of some issues during the third stage of the rocket deployment. The EOS-N1 was a defense satellite which was built jointly by DRDO and ISRO. And one of the commercial payloads on this mission was also EON Space Lab's commercial payload, which is called the Mira payload. Now, let's begin by talking about the mission itself. It was the first mission of 2026, and probably it's not a good sign that it was not successful. But Ashwin, um, can you talk to us about the PSLV itself? You know, it's called the work horse of ISRO. What does this mission and um, how it turned out, what it means for uh, PSLV? So the PSLV is, uh, it, it, you know, the whole Indian space program was arguably built on top of the PSLV. It is the most successful rocket in the Indian space program developed by the by ISRO. It has a long history and it has, I think it has had around 64 launches so far. And uh, only four of those were, were considered failures. Maybe one other was a partial failure sometimes sometime in the 1990s, but that was also considered a partial success. So the PSLV fa failing is definitely a huge outlier in the grand scheme of things as far as the PSLV rocket is concerned. Um, the And this is more concerning with uh, this time around it because it has seen two consecutive failures in the last few months. So the previous launch, this PSLV C61, which was also of a similar configuration. It was a, uh, the, the PSLV stands for Polar Synchronous Launch Vehicle. And it was of the XL configuration, the extra large configuration, which basically means it has strap-on boosters on either side to increase its capacity. So both of these configurations are similar across the C61 and the C62. And both have suffered similar failures. The, the, the C61 had a failure in the third stage. The first two stages were completely fine and there was some issue with the third stage. This time around as well, it seems like the, the third stage is again the culprit. So that has been the reason for a lot of concern in the industry and in the space technology community in, in the country because the last failure was literally back in 2017 and that was related to the heat shield. So it was less fundamental of an issue it was uh, the heat shield did not separate and that was that that was not a major fundamental design flaw in the system but the third stage itself failing to consecutive times is more concerning and uh, to highlight the, the the why this is such an exception i think for more than 20 years before 2017 there has not been a single failure it has always been uh, you know it's been serving perfectly and there's been never an issue so that is why it has raised a lot of eyebrows and it has raised a lot of concern. Thanks, Ashwin. That was actually a very good um, history of the PSLV and now we have the context. Now, Sanjay, this mission, along with yours, it had a number of other Indian startup payloads also. And yours was along with another startup called Take Me to Space. Can you tell us a little bit about the Mira payload and why was it significant? Yeah, sure. Thank you so much for having me here. Uh, so basically, the payload Mira itself is uh, uh, basically acronym for uh, Miniaturized Imager for Reconnaissance and Analysis. It's basically uh, uh, built for a next generation of CubeSats or next generation of small satellites, uh, micro satellites or nano satellites itself. We would uh, we actually build a payload that uh, is going to reduce the size and volume of the overall uh, imaging payload that goes into a regular uh, satellites, where you know that essentially will. Uh, you know, may enable satellite launchers or satellite uh, providers to have more number of satellites in the same budget. So essentially saving them, uh, you know, uh, in terms of their uh, monetary benefits. Uh, so there basically the Mira product itself uh, is not made in a traditional way. So we came uh, apart from the traditional way where we looked into some uh, different way of making a payload. And that way we, will be, we were able to reduce the size by almost factor of three times and weight by almost 50% to achieve the same uh, GSD resolution from 500 kilometer. So this was uh, the payload that we were planning to fly, but uh, 
because of this, we will be actually looking to follow, looking forward to fly our second payload, uh, same concept, and we'll be flying it in mid of this year. So that's the whole plan for the Mira. But the Mira was actually a nine band multi-spectral cameras that uh, will give you a nine different bands in visible spectrum itself and was meant towards agricultural applications and other commercial application itself. Providing okay. a resolution of 9.2 meter GST is a quite significant achievement in such a form factor. And that is the new uh, technology that we developed. We went through a lot of cycle to build this product and we were able to you know, uh, successfully qualify it to be flying in this PSLV C62 launch. And uh, you know, hopefully next launch, we'll be able to capture more images from space with this payload. That's great. Thank you so much. And now um, Ashwin, so there have been a few previous snags, as you mentioned, in missions by ISRO. Um, the last PSLV was the US-9 in May, which was also a defense or strategic oriented mission. And the Navic mission too has not had the best track record. Now, is there a need for ISRO to take a step back and focus on what's going on, especially with regards to its strategic missions over the past few years? Um, the, the last two missions failing and uh, the payloads in these missions being of strategic importance is more or less a coincidence. It is not that the strategic payloads have been in any way uh, a reason for the missions uh, running into issues. It is just unfortunate that the last two, uh, you know, satellites, the, the EOS-09, the previous one, and the, the current one, which was a hyperspectral payload, have both been of, uh, you know, importance in terms of uh, surveillance and border security and other national security goals, and they happen to run into issues. Um, that will definitely set us back in a sense, because both of these were advanced high-tech satellites. They'll have to be redesigned. A lot of money probably went into designing and manufacturing them. They'll have to be made, remade and relaunched in the coming months. And obviously that is going to cause delays. And that will they'll they'll have had varying degrees of importance in, in terms of the strategic purposes that they were going to perform. Um, so that is also going to uh, have an impact. But um, it is not that this was of extremely high level of strategic importance. They were important, yes. But it is uh, it is not that it is uh, you know uh, going to be a serious fundamental issue of, of any sort. But it is still um, this is still something that ISRO will have to take cognizance of because the workhorse uh, launch vehicle, which is it's it's in the minds of the people in the in the, in the minds of the market, the armed forces, and all the other stakeholders involved, it is usually just assumed that these launches will uh, you know like go fine without any issue. And that that being in question right now puts a lot of strain on ISRO and the Indian space program. Possibly there will have to be investigations conducted and 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 the questions like if there is any fundamental design flaw or if there has been a bad batch of manufacturing in the recent months, uh, all of those questions will need to be asked and answered. And I'm sure ISRO will do that over the course of the months. But because of the delays, there will be higher pressure on other launch vehicles like the SSLV and the LVM3, which will probably be brought into use to make up for uh, the the lack of launches in, with, of the PSLV in the coming months while all of this is being, being investigated. So yeah, it is. And the fact is that, uh, you know, ISRO is still the only uh, or successfully successful uh, orbital launcher in the country. It is the only agency which has had end-to-end -end capabilities in space. It is what makes India a complete space park in terms of it has it can do everything it can do launches it can do payload manufacturing it can do uh, you know uh, all the downstream applications of space it is able to do the end-to-end -end spectrum of uh, what we do in, in terms of space technology and isro is still the only one that does that there are a few private companies that has that have developed their rockets but their tests have all been suborbital so far they're yet to uh, do a successful orbital test they're yet to take commercial orders for uh, space launch and so, uh, you know, having our workhorse launch vehicle uh, being under investigation and being uh, exam re-examined for safety and having two consecutive failures is concerning. It does put strain on our own strategic goals uh, for the future in terms of what and and the launch cadence of ISRO has generally been low. It has been less than 10 uh, 
uh, it's been generating the single digits in the last few years and that that number is dwarfed a lot by uh, the other space bars of today the chinese launch a lot more they have reached hundreds of launches uh, very recently and they are picking up that cadence a lot and uh, the us has always dominated the uh, launch cadence and they have they have mastered the they have private companies like spacex that have mastered the art of reusable rockets and they have extremely high launch cadence so this having this misstep in the fundamental layer of space activity which is launch because that's the whole thing that defines your space access itself um, is a problem that we need to address very quickly that was very well said and actually building off of what you said um ashwin i wanted to go back to sanjay so isro has you know it has consistently shown support for private space companies um and private space startups in the country and this mission was sort of an example of that um and as much as we don't want these things to happen it is you know inevitable that sometimes they do sometimes things don't work out but um putting that aside what is next for eon space labs um you know what are some things that we can expect from you you mentioned an another launch later in the year so what is the next two year plan or one year plan that you can tell us about eon how are you bouncing back from this sure so uh, basically this uh, plan for eon uh, is very straightforward we are looking to get uh, you know indigenous capability of building this uh, payloads uh, which is very crit critical to have especially looking at you know uh, the kind of technology that we have in the country and the kind of uh, uh, basically experience that we have on and building upon isro's uh, legacies we can actually you know learn a lot from them and actually get a guidance from them as well as a startup where we can actually you know build things in india and when you design your stuff in india when you design your payload when you design your systems in india you get more confident in you know making next payload more success and next next mission more successful as well and that's what we are doing at eon we are we are designing the payload completely from scratch using indigenous component indigenous manufacturing and uh, you know indigenous design as well so with that basically we are getting a lot of confidence on you know moving on to the next mission as well so for us next mission is basically uh, to get fly the same a payload that we have flied a flown now apart from that to scale the resolution even further going up to you know a bigger diameter of our payload to get at less than 3.7 meter resolution as well and then subsequently year on and then we'll fly even uh, you know smaller uh, resolution from space as well so we will go in an incremental way where we'll first demonstrate the imaging capability from 500 km at around 9.2 meter gst then we'll go for 3.7 meter and then we'll go for less than 2 meter as well so we plan to you know uh, scale our product accordingly so we will have few offering of the product for cube sat segment which are very small then small sat and then subsequently big uh, larger sat as well where we will be making bigger payloads so we want to create that indigenous capability at eon so that you know we have complete control on any kind of customization we want on the payload any type of data that we want from the payload that can be achievable from the country especially from the private sector and we don't have to look forward uh, you know we don't have to look outward of the country to get the payload access and you know rely upon geopolitical scenarios to get better so that we our supply chain never gets interrupted and all so most important part of indigenization is not making india as per obviously that is the best part of it but uh, is the indigenization actually helps you uh, get your supply chain uh, robust basically so that you don't have to rely upon you know getting certain parts certain design from outside of the india and all. so that's what we are uh, tackling at at eon where we want to build this capability where we don't have to rely upon uh, imported things for much time that's great that thank you so much for that and now ashwin i'll let you have the um, the last word but basically this was also a mission where so a few videos were doing the rounds on social media where we saw like towards the end the third stage and fourth stage the rocket did start spinning quite rapidly um and um what we heard from isro was that um it there was an issue and that they will look at their data and get back to us um which is very similar to what we had heard um after the 2025 may launch failure also um however the failure analysis committee's findings were not really shared with the media now do you think that this is time that isro needs to start being more open and more communicative about its missions and um, about the going ons especially when there are 
um, foreign customer satellites involved, that there's, um, you know, multiple payloads involved. So what are your thoughts on that? So I think this definitely calls for more transparency from ISRO as a space agency for the country because um, space technology has predominantly been, uh, you know, a playground of the governments before. Um, but now it is a lot more diverse. It is a lot more open. There are more stakeholders. For instance, this mission itself had 15 other payloads besides the primary payload, which was the Anvesh for the hyperspectral satellite. So there, is, there was a diplomatic payload as well uh, by Nepal. So there is definitely more stakeholders in the game and more parties with uh, skin in the game that they would want to know what, what is happening uh, with the rocket uh, and so that there is also more commercial in, commercial uh, questions here at play. For instance, if there is going to be uh, insurance premiums charged for, uh, pay, for payload manufacturers that want to insure their payloads in case of future uh, issues with launches, will that attract higher premium for uh, PSLV or ISRO because there has been a couple of launch, couple of failures now? Um, you know, those are questions that we need to answer. And for that, transparency goes a long way. If ISRO is more forthcoming in terms of what went wrong, um, how, how they plan to remediate for the future, if they have successfully identified the issue, and if they are going to uh, change things for the future, that is going to inspire more confidence. And that will result in, you know, realistic uh, market outcomes that are desirable for the Indian space program. It is also a revenue inflow. Uh, there is ever since the rise of uh, private companies like SpaceX cornering a lot of the launch market, the, the number of payloads that ISRO has flown for its commercial customers from around the world has dropped. Uh, but these steps in terms of transparency do help in that regard. Um, and, and also just the fact that it is still taxpayer money, it is still public funds that is funding uh, this research and development by the, the uh, Indian Space Research Organization uh, calls for the fact that they should be more forthcoming in, in with all of these issues, especially when it happens. Um, so yeah, I hope hopefully uh, whatever co the committees that are formed, the investigations that follow uh, will shed more light on, on all of these issues and they will be shared with uh, the, the public at large going forward. I think that's an important um, step to take if we are going to if the goal is to have a more uh, inclusive, open uh, space technology sector, and P and if PSLV is going to see con continued demand across all the players, that's great. That's perfect. And that brings us to the end of our session. Thank you so much, gentlemen, for being with us today. And we wish you and Istro all the best with all of its future endeavors. Thank you so much.